Hi, the media has recently been reporting that only in the US there are more than 4 million Gen Z who are not in school and they are not employed, and they are attributing that to the fact that universities are granting what they call worthless degrees. There is also change in the job market because of application of new technology, and today we are going to be looking at those troubling trends, and I'll provide some advice on how you can prepare for a future of artificial intelligence in the workplace. So stay tuned. <music> Hi, welcome to Careers Cast. The trigger for me to record this episode was that a few days ago I was reading a bunch of articles on the global phenomena of Gen Z going to college, getting education, and then not being able to find good jobs in the market, which is a big problem. Uh, if you're uh, watching this on video, I'm going to put uh, an article on the screen, otherwise I'm going to read a headline from Fortune magazine from a few days ago. And it reads... Over 4 million Gen Z's are jobless and experts blame colleges for worthless degrees and a system of broken promises for the rising number of people who are not in education, employed or in training. So I don't think that is an intentional purpose uh, from the universities, right, to grant you uh, uh, worthless degrees or to teach you things that are not useful. But it is a fact that I see people coming out of uh, college with the skills, only the operational skills for jobs in the past and not the knowledge they need to adapt to the future. <clears throat> and I think for me to communicate that to you or that experience to you, the best way I can do is uh, provide a few examples and hopefully one of them will be close enough to what you're planning to do so that you can, I can share my perspective with you. So... Example number one is computer science, right? So computer science is about using computing uh, to solve business problem. And usually that involves system design, system architecture, algorithms, and things like that. Uh, the problem with computer science is that in the last 30 years, a lot of the high paying jobs, right? They were in software development, right? Software engineers who are primarily writing code. So what happened is people gravitate towards those skills and the schools respond right and kind of everyone forgets about what computer science is and we think that computer science is about software development so people spend four years at the university uh, learning how programming languages and how to cut and paste uh, code right to get computers to do something and while that is part of computer science it is only a small part of computer science but the economic incentive is to invest all the time, you know, learning those things. <clears throat> and the, the big problem is um, cut and paste of code is something that large language models, AI, can do very effectively. And we expect that in a few years, right, a lot of that work is going to be automated and the number of jobs in just basic software development are going to go away. It doesn't mean computer science is going to be less important. It's going to be more important, but the jobs that will exist in computer science are going to be different. They are not going to be cutting and pasting code. <clears throat> uh, let's say you're going to marketing, right? Marketing is about branding, is about understanding consumer behavior, is about positioning, is about competitive analysis. Those are the strategic components, right, of marketing. And in the last uh, 10 years, 20 years, uh, a lot of the jobs in marketing have been in digital media and social media and managing advertising campaigns, right? So people go to marketing school and they spend a lot of time learning how to write copy for advertisement, create graphics that are not very creative and uh, post social media ads and manage social media campaigns. <clears throat> While that is part of marketing, it's not what marketing is supposed to be, uh, but everyone gravitates towards those skills. And the problem is in the future, right? Uh, there'll be a lot, a lot less demand for copywriting, for non-creative graphic design uh, and managing campaigns because that's gonna be automated. So computer science, marketing, let's say you go to medical school and I think everyone knows what 
med medicine is about is about human health. Uh, but today, right, a lot of jobs in the healthcare system, <clears throat> especially here in the U.S., they have nothing to do with the human health, right? There's a lot of there are a lot of jobs that are in managing insurance payments and insurance policies and cross-referencing symptoms to drugs and uh, treatment and coding treatments, rather than focus on what the, the real purpose of medicine is. And, and a lot of people go to medical school, right? <clears throat> and they spend a lot of time learning those things that are, should not exist, right, in the future. And one more, last example, you go to language, you major in English literature, right? And that's about understanding the power of language in human thinking, in, in how language can be used creatively, the cultural and artistic aspects of languages and things like that, right? That's the, the core discipline you go to learn when you go to, to the university. The problem is a lot of the practical jobs, right, in the past have been in things like copywriting, translation, transcription of text, and those are tasks that will be automated. L large language models can perform very effectively and the number of jobs in those spaces are going to decrease. And because universities are reacting to the demand created by individuals, right? Uh, in a lot of cases, they forget about literature, they forget about medicine, they forget about computer science or marketing, and they focus, right? in providing only those operational skills that eventually will go away. And because people are not learning the high level concepts, it's gonna be very difficult for them to adapt to the new jobs, even if they have a university diploma. So that's a problem. I think as a society, the solution for that problem is that we as a society, we need to demand, right? We need to refocus and demand that the educational system kind of go back to basics right, and prepare people with the concepts so that they can then learn the skills that are going to be needed in an automated future with artificial intelligence, right? <clears throat> but you cannot wait as individuals, right, you cannot wait for those things to happen. So the question is, what can you do, right, uh, being an individual going to college or, or investing in training anyway? I think what you can do is first demand that, right, and second, uh, when you go to college, you can select, for the most part, in the U.S., you can select what you study. You can take pick your classes. And yes, if you're going to do computer science, you need to know how to write code. But you should focus on computer science, right? And, and focus on the science part of computer science. If you're going to marketing, you, you can and you should focus on the high-level concepts of marketing, understand the essence of marketing and, you know, learning how to do social media. That's not why you go to college, right? Uh, and the same thing applies to all areas. And I, I think you understand, right? There is a trade-off between what people tell you, well, the good jobs are in software development. That might not be the case five, 10 years ago when you are in the job market, right? Managing social media campaigns is where the jobs are today, but they are not going to be five, ten years ago uh, uh, in the future, uh, and so far so, right? <clears throat> so I think that's the key advice to you, is to focus on the high-level concepts, not on the tactical operational skills. And and before we finish, right, let me, let me give you a list of things that I think are important. Uh, number one, uh, career is a lifelong project, right? And you have a plan, whatever you are in that plan, right? You should not dramatically change directions out of fear, out of false assumptions, right? And artificial intelligence is here. Artificial intelligence will cause changes in the workspace and in society in general. Those changes are gonna be very impactful, but they're gonna happen over the next 20 years. So that is time, right? for us to get used to it, for us to start adapting to the new world that will emerge with the adoption of the technology. So you should not, because someone tells you that software development is going to go away next year. That's not true. 
But even if it was true, it doesn't mean you should give up your plan of going to computer science, right? Uh, so stay the course, just refocus on the high level concepts that you're gonna need in the future to adapt to the new jobs that will exist. Number two, embrace technology, right? Yes, artificial intelligence carries some risks, uh, but if, if you embrace the technology, you're, you're gonna be in a better position to influence the use of technology so that it's productive and positive in society. So don't be afraid, the technology is coming anyway, embrace it, uh, and by doing that, you're gonna both be more competitive, you're gonna have more influence in how it's utilized. Number three, uh, if you go to a university, you have the privilege of going to a university, use the time there wisely, right? Uh, you're, you're there to party, yes. You are there to learn some basic skills you didn't have, yes. But do not focus on those basic skills, right? Uh, social, social media, you learn, you don't go to the university to learn how to post in social media. You don't go to university to learn how to do cut and paste of code, right? You, if you're going to the university, you should use the time wisely and learn computer science, learn marketing, learn literature, learn medicine, not the, the tactical um, skills. And number four, and I think that's actionable, is some action you can take today, is there is a lot of change ahead of us right? And a lot of uh, navigating those changes require uh, visibility, visibility that you don't have if you are early, early in your career, right? So my advice is pick someone who has life experience, who has professional experience, someone you trust. It could be your parents, it could be a relative, it could be a friend, it could be a co-worker, right? But have a conversation with them and get their perspective, right? Because if you, if you take someone from my generation, I went through something very similar in the beginning of the internet, right? It was gonna change everything, it was gonna change very fast, and a lot of jobs would not exist, and, and it, it was the same story, right? And it took 20 years for the internet to become reality, and we all changed, and we all adapted, right? And we all surviving uh, the fact that the internet is here. And more than that, we are benefiting from the technology to make our lives easier and better, right? The same thing can happen with artificial intelligence and it's up to us. Uh, the experience of other people don't apply directly to your life because the times are different, the context is different, but their perspective is valuable, right? So I suggest you talk to someone you trust and just say, hey, I am in college, or I'm going to college, or I'm graduating from college, and there is all these changes and I'm worried, right? What's your perspective? Can we talk about it? And, and by talking to people, first you're gonna learn that it's not time to panic, right? Uh, you're gonna learn the, some of the lessons they learned uh, when they were in your shoes. And I, th I think that's uh, one action item that uh, brings a lot of benefits in addition to the three steps I gave you before. If this discussion was useful to you, please subscribe and share. And I see you in the next episode of Careers Cast.